My name is Elena Pasqual, and I will be talking to you today about cadmium toxicity. Cadmium is a silver-white soft metal often found associated with zinc, lead, and copper ores in the Earth's crust. Cadmium is a transition metal found in group 12 of the periodic table of elements and is commonly found in its plus 2 valence state in the environment. This form of cadmium prevents it from degrading in the environment, allowing it to accumulate over time. Cadmium is a thiophilic element which has similar properties to its fellow group members zinc and mercury. Because of its thiophilic nature, cadmium can bind to metalloproteins and essential metal transporters with a higher affinity compared to biologically essential metals and can disrupt important cellular processes such as cell signaling, metabolism, and regulation. Cadmium and its alloys can be found in a variety of products. Cadmium compounds such as cadmium sulfide and cadmium selenide are used as pigments to color glass, ceramics, and plastics. Cadmium sulfide and cadmium telluride are also used in solar panels and electronics. Cadmium is also used to make nickel cadmium batteries and is a component of phosphate fertilizer. Cadmium can be released into the environment through natural and anthropogenic sources. Natural sources of cadmium emission include volcanic eruptions, forest fires, and physical and chemical weathering of rocks. Anthropogenic sources of cadmium emission include non-ferrous mining, phosphate fertilizer manufacturing, and waste incineration. Anthropogenic sources of cadmium emissions constitute the majority of cadmium that is emitted into the environment. Individuals can become exposed to cadmium through their diet, work, and through smoking. Diet is the main source of exposure of cadmium in individuals who are non-smoking and live in non-occupational areas, and it is estimated that anywhere from 8 to 25 micrograms of cadmium are taken in daily. Individuals with vegetarian diets or diets high in shellfish are exposed to even higher levels of cadmium because of cadmium uptake because cadmium uptake is high in leafy vegetables and in shellfish. People who work in cadmium-emitting industries can become exposed to cadmium through the inhalation of cadmium particles that are produced by industrial operations. Smoking is also a significant source of cadmium because tobacco leaves can contain high levels of cadmium. Smoking one cigarette can release 10% of the cadmium that is stored within the cigarette, 50% of which is absorbed by the lungs. Cadmium can enter the body through the gastrointestinal tract and through the lungs. The gastrointestinal tract serves as the primary route of cadmium entry into the body and is characterized by slow absorption. It is estimated that exposing an individual to cadmium will only result in 0.5 to 8% of cadmium being absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract. The amount of cadmium that is absorbed is dependent on different factors such as dose and individual characteristics. The lung is the second major route of cadmium entry into the body, and it is the most effective route. The amount that is absorbed in the lungs is dependent on different factors such as particle size and respiratory defenses. Smaller particles are able to bypass respiratory defenses and can deposit themselves in the alveoli. The alveoli are places of high cadmium absorption, and it is estimated that anywhere from 50 to 100 percent of the cadmium particles that are deposited in the alveoli are transferred to the blood. Once absorbed, cadmium can cause significant adverse health effects throughout the body. The kidney is the primary target of cadmium toxicity. Cadmium bound to metallothionine in the blood plasma can be filtered by the glomerulus and can be taken in by the proximal tubule cells. In the proximal tubule cells, cadmium is separated from metallothionine by the lysosomes and is released into the cytosol, where it binds to other, other forms of metallothionine in the cytosol. Over time, cadmium-bound metallothionine complexes can accumulate in the renal cortex and can cause tubular dysfunction. Further accumulation of cadmium-bound metallothionine complexes can eventually lead to kidney inflammation and renal failure. Individuals who are exposed to cadmium can also experience musculoskeletal system health effects. Cadmium can have 
direct and indirect effects on the musculoskeletal system. Cadmium directly affects the musculoskeletal system by inhibiting calcium absorption by the bones. Cadmium-induced renal failure can indirectly affect the musculoskeletal system by decreasing vitamin D metabolism, which results in decreased calcium absorption in the bones. Individuals who are susceptible to cadmium toxicity include occupational workers, individuals who are deficient in essential nutrients, and children. Occupational workers are more susceptible to cadmium toxicity because they are exposed to a greater concentration of cadmium. Nutritionally deficient individuals are more susceptible to cadmium toxicity because they are more likely to absorb and retain cadmium in the absence of these biologically essential metals. Children are also a susceptible population with regards to cadmium toxicity because they have higher respiration rates and higher food and drink consumption. These can, these can increase exposure to cadmium and result in more absorption of cadmium into their system. Their ongoing development also makes them more susceptible to absorbed calcium cadmium in their system. There is no effective clinical treatment for acute and chronic cadmium exposure. However, preventative measures can be taken to ensure that individuals mitigate their exposure to cadmium. In occupational settings, the use of protective gear and proper ventilation will help decrease exposure of cadmium particles to workers. In addition, in non-occupational settings, the removal of cadmium contaminated dust will decrease the likelihood of cadmium absorption into the body. Thank you for listening. These are my references.